All right, so let's create some new UI elements here. What you'll notice is when we move our game view, our settings button doesn't scale with our view. So if we switch between these different views, especially in free aspect, which is nice because you can see what it'd be like on mobile or other devices. So for instance, like watch what's happening as I'm moving this to my settings button. Notice it starts to get clipped. Like say this is essentially what our mobile view is, we would lose our button. So let's redock this at the bottom here. All right, I'm going to click on 2D view so we can frame this a little better. And let's go to 16 by 9 just so we can see this. Now what we can do is if we select our button here and we click on the center here, you can see there's anchors down at the bottom. And the anchors are essentially, you see these little blue buttons around our settings button. They allow us to scale or adjust our button. You can also access this by pressing the T key, T like Tom. So if I move my little blue these little blue buttons around, you'll see it also updates all the scaling in the transform section. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here um, and show you in, in the dead center, you can actually kind of move these the center point around. See how I'm kind of moving that? But I want to leave it in where it is now and just show you how to do it manually. So what I'm going to do is go look at your rec transform section under the inspector on the right hand side with your button selected. And I'm just going to left click and you can see they give you extra options at the top. And I'm going to click on that button in the corner and you'll notice that our pivot point moved to that left corner. Now when we, re we move our scene around and I move it to left to right, you can see that our settings button stays on screen. So we're actually setting that pivot point so that it reacts to the screen's corner section. Uh, if we tear off our game view, and we do it too. There's a little bit of a an issue with it updating, so you kind of have to like move and then let go. See how it's, it pops when I move this? But you can see that it essentially just updates just as well. A little bit of extra checking there. All right, let's select our canvas for a second. And say we want our resolution to be constant across any device, Windows, mobile, console. In the Canvas Scaler section, you'll see there's this constant pixel size, which is pretty good. If you want it to be a little more performant, you can select the second option, which is Scale with Scene Size, or Screen Size, rather. And what that does is if you have a mobile device or whatever, it'll automatically adjust the resolution depending on the strength of the resolution of the device that you're using. All right, let's go back to our canvas. Let's go to UI and let's add a, an image. And this image is going to serve as our background. So we can, again, with the rec transform, adjust the size of that. We can also adjust the placement of this so it sits behind all of our different aspects or different assets, rather, and by just dragging it up like that. Now, we're not able to see our button because it's white. So let's go ahead and click over here and change the color. See how now we can see our game title as well as our button. We could play with the alpha. That's the transparency of this background image. I might change the color a little bit. Let's play around with that and see if I can find something that's a little bit more pleasant. Feel free to pick whatever one that you like. Something like that is pretty cool. But make sure to check your game view more than your scene view because that's really what's going to be seen by the, as the player is playing your game. So let's go back to UI. And let's add a text box here. And I'm going to move it up to the left-hand corner and just rename this Settings. And the reason for this is this is really just going to be our Settings menu. Cool. And then you can adjust the font size and as well as the font. I want to go with Aladdin. Keep everything kind of on, on, on the same track. So here we have our Settings. Let's turn off Word Wrap as well. And that way we're not, our S isn't falling below. And we could just kind of adjust the scale of the uh, settings section. All right, let's go ahead and select our image and let's give it a title. And we're just going to call this like settings menu. And what we're going to do in a little bit is turn on and off these buttons so that, um, 
or turn on and off these different menus. So let's move settings menu towards the bottom there. And the reason I'm doing this is just because uh, um, so we can, we'll, we'll have it turn on and off when we click our settings button. And so let's go ahead and add a button. And this is going to be our exit button. And let's go ahead and name this exit button. And also notice like the reason I set those top two as uh, inactive by unchecking the check mark was just so we uh, we can see what we're doing better. So let's again, let's expand our exit button, change the text to exit. And actually, I think I'm going to change this around a little bit. Let's go ahead and um, change it from exit to maybe an X. And let's move this up to the corner as well. So let's make this an X here. And then I'm going to go ahead and scale that down a little bit. Oops, let me make sure that I'm selecting my button here. And then let's move its position to the upper right hand corner, make it a little more modern, uh, not so old school. And we can also adjust um, the background of our, our button. So let me actually make my font bald as well, a little bit bigger. So we have a bold X there. Um, but as mentioned, let's go ahead and select our exit button. And then you can see here under source image, there's this UI sprite. I want to make it a little more circular. I think it'll look cooler. And there's some default stuff in there. So let's select that. And let me scale it up just a little bit. It looks a little kind of squished. Yeah, that looks good. Cool. So we have our settings screen. Now let's think about, well, how do we program this um, so that when I click on my my button here, let's unhide that, my settings button and my title, that the settings will essentially hide the game title and bring back my settings. So notice on the button, there's a section called on click. When you hit the plus sign, you add an, an event or an active element. So let's drag our settings menu into that little slot. And then under no function, we're going to go to game object, refer, which refers to the game object we dragged in and click on set active boolean. Now notice, without this checked on, what happens when I press play. Oops, let's actually do one other thing before I press play. Let's go into our project settings. Make sure you're in the editor section. And scroll down till you see play mode settings. And under that, enter play mode option, and check that on. What that does is it doesn't reload it every single time. So now when I press play, you can see it's super fast. But also notice when I'm clicking settings, nothing is happening. And the reason is we need to turn on this little check mark here. Because what that's saying is I want to set it from inactive to active. So let's go ahead and test that out. So here, now we have play. We have our settings button selected. Let's go ahead and check on in the unclick section. And what we're saying is when I click this button, set it to active. So let's press play and, um, and check that our menu is working. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go ahead and click settings and boom, click the X or anything else. You'll see that nothing happens. So what we have to do is now that we have our settings there is in our settings menu, go ahead and find that settings button and grab the title text. And what we'll do is we'll go to game object set active and we'll turn off our title this time. So I'm going to uncheck this and say we're going to set that to inactive when we plus settings. So let's go ahead and do that. So now you could see it hit our game title and it brought our settings menu. But when I click settings or I click the X, our settings screen stays there. So let's go ahead and uh, adjust this so that when I click the X, it closes the settings scene and it brings back our um, title. So under settings menu, even though it's still hidden, it's okay. You select the exit button and then let's add another action in on click. And this time I'm going to drag in my um, my title. And this time what I want the title to do is, remember it was uh, unchecked before. So game object, let's like set active. And now I want it to become active. So I'm going to check that on when I click the exit button. So let's test that out. So settings, I'm going to hit X. And awesome, my game title is back. But it's not shutting off this menu. So pretty sure you guessed it. We're going to turn on the plus. We're going to drag our settings menu in there and we're going to turn off our setting menu. So game object, set active, and then uncheck it saying that we want to un, we want to 
un set it to inactive. So let's try that. So settings, hit the X, boom, there we go. Now we have our game title and it loops between them.